today we will be looking at one of the most satirical play in the history of Nigerian fiction uh, titled The Trial of Brother Jero by Professor Wale Soinka. Uh, today we will be doing the scene by scene analysis of it and in the subsequent video uh, we will be looking at the themes and the dramatic devices used in the play. So you can subscribe to the channel so that you get notified when the other videos are uploaded. So the play, for some of you who may not know much about Wale Shonka, Wale Shonka is a professor of literature and he is a professor emeritus. He has lectured English and literature in many universities in the United States, in the United Kingdom, in Nigeria, and other parts of the world. So he has written a lot of play. One of it is The Lion and the Jewel. We have other one like The King Hosma. And then the one we are going to be discussing now, The Trial of Brother Jero. So the play revolves around a man of God or a cleric. Even from the picture you are seeing, on your computer or mobile phone you can see a portrait of a man trying to address other people and all of them are looking up to him so it is just a summary of what is the content of the play so the play revolves around a man called brother jeroboam brother jeroboam brother jeroboam is a brother that is commonly known as Brother Jeru. He is a servant of an old prophet, and um, he made sure the old prophet acquired land. And when people were fighting to take away the land from the old prophet, he ensured that uh, the land is not taken from the old prophet. So the old prophet, so before then, we saw him on the stage introducing himself to the people that uh, his name is Jeroboam and he is a prophet by birth and by inclination. So what that means is that he was born a prophet and at the same time his calling and his ambition and desires is also into the ministry of prophecy. So he has his destiny and ambition all in the ministry of prophecy. Uh, is he really a good prophet? Uh, we will find out as we discuss scene by scene of the play. Uh, this play is just one act. We have seen one, two, three, four, and five. So in the recent years, he lamented on the stage that the work is no longer fruitful or not bringing much money because uh, several people have decided to engage in the life that is not godly according to him. They take pleasures of life rather than going to church. Uh, so the business of prophecy is no longer lucrative according to Brother Jeroboam, Brother Jero. So he laments at the beginning of the play and in the continuation of it, we also saw that um, the occupation of prophecy has become so dirty and so undesirable by people. That is, even when you mention yourself that you are a prophet, many people will just not consider you as somebody who have ambition in life. So, and the prophet and other men of God have been having a lot of quarrel among themselves over land that even the people that are not Christians at all or are not prophet or cleric cannot do such a thing. So Giriboa assisted one of his old master. The old master he calls an old prophet. He assisted him to gain a piece of land where people were fighting for land. And the old master, which is also old prophet, he regarded Brother Jeroboam as a faithful servant, 
not knowing that Abura Jeroboam was planning to take away the land from him later. So when Jeroboam attempted to take away the land from the old prophet, the old prophet insisted that it is his land. So Borodai Jeruna accused him that he should have died. By now, he shouldn't be on earth. He has outlived his years on earth. That long ago, he was supposed to be in the grave by now. But he is still living and still struggling when his time on earth is up. As if he knows uh, the plan of God for the old prophet. So the old prophet was so enraged, anger, and caused Brajero. So Brajero believed that his cause cannot his cause cannot do anything to him. And then um, he discarded the cause and called it it is of no effect. So we saw in the same tool. We saw a man and a woman who are a husband and wife. I'm aware and the husband Chumi, they were going and then the man was carrying his wife on a bicycle and he suddenly stopped in front of a house, a small hut in a fishing village. So the wife was so hot because the wife, the, he applied brakes suddenly and that won't make his wife to provoke and the wife said she hurt herself and the husband shouldn't do like that. And also, Chumi defended himself by stating that uh, he did not give him enough. That is, the wife did not give him enough time, enough uh, time to stop in front of the house. He no notice. So after alighting, he, the woman continued murmuring, talking and talking, blaming the husband, and asked the husband to drop her load. And they also cautioned the husband that the two saucepans should not be wasted. He should hold them, handle them with care. So the husband packed all of them near a hut and then um, left. A few minutes after, we saw Brother Jero, which is a Brother Jeroboam. And what happened? He opens the window, breathing fresh air, and then meditate. He notices the black. The back of the woman and what did he do he attempted to escape because he owed the woman money he used to buy it. He, used to, he used to buy his uh, beret cap that he's using as a as a prophetic material so realizing who she is she tried to search the door and then i'm aware who is consulting her book containing the says now made the debt to owe her he asked Jero where he is going without turning her head. So he noticed that Brajero was attempting to go, and then he also questioned Brajero where is he going and why is he going out. He must pay her money before going out. So I'm going to question Brother Jero, and then we saw that uh, Brother Jero was trying to cool her down so that he can escape. Then from there, in the continuation of scene two, a woman, a fish seller, selling smoked fish was passing and then Brother uh, Amokwe asked for the price of the fish and wanted to buy. The woman refused to stop because she was going to market. He doesn't want anybody to talk to her in a way that it will bring bad luck to her. But uh, later on, she alighted the load with the help of Amokwe and then Amokwe began to ask her whether the fish were of this week or last week. That infuriated the woman, and the woman then started talking, and then another argument ensued between Amokwe and the fish seller. In that process, Brother Jero escaped to the church. So in scene three, we, after evading from being a prisoner in his own house uh, for refusing to pay for the velvet, we saw him in the church. He arrived at the church earlier than the worshippers. So Chume arrived to find Rajero on his knee, praying. So Chume now asked him why is he to Rajero asked Chume why is he not in the in his place of work? And Chume lied that he told the people that uh, he was sick and then they let him go. But he was not actually sick. He may be angry because of what the wife had uh, did to him and then so he claimed the woman has been abusing him. So Brother Jero, when Brother 
through McCain, he sought for permission from uh, Brother Jero so that he can beat his wife because his wife has been abusing him. But Brother Jero refused, insisting that beating his wife is a tragedy that can never should be allowed. So we also saw that uh, he, he continued praying too. We saw the drama, one of the drama running from one side of the from one side to the other. So behind him is a woman chasing him. Who is this woman chasing? Then Brajero stopped. Because Brajero was already preaching and starting the service. And then he stopped and asked, Why is he being pursued by a woman? So the boy replied that he has not done anything. And then he only drew me to beg for arms, but the woman now thought that uh, he was insulting her through the sound of the drum, and then he was insulting her father. So let's see, this is a continuation of scene three. So the woman also happened to be her neighbor, but she doesn't pay attention to him. So we saw that uh, Puradume, uh, Brother Jero hands over his rod to Chume and ran after the woman and the drummer. And then we saw that a few minutes later, the woman is seen carrying the drum while the boy is in tow begging her to return his drum. So Brajero arrived at the church again after chasing the woman and the boy. And then his clothes was torn and then his face bleeding. What happened to him? I believe the woman has fought with him and uh, overpowered him. So the worshippers are told to return home and come back later because the prophet is injured and need to take good care of him before he comes to prophesy. So, so Brajeronan give permission to Chume to beat his wife because his wife is the one responsible for the toll of his clothes. But when the interest of uh, Chume was being jeopardized by the wife, he never asked Brother Jero, uh, Chume to beat. So we can see that in this scene for brother Chume came and told his wife that they should go home, but the wife refused. Why? Because the wife sensing that uh, it's an unusual. So Amoka repeatedly banged on brother Jero's door, screaming to her that her husband want to kill her. And then she insists she won't go anywhere. And then the, the husband also insisted that they must go home together with the intention that he is going to beat her at home. So she continued, that is, Amokwe continued banging on the door of brother Jero. And then uh, the, the hot to open the door, but uh, he still refused. So when the husband, which is Amokwe, was behaving, uh, we saw that. Uh, Brother uh, Am Amokwe, the husband is Chume. When Amokwe, we saw that Amokwe implored the prophet, which is Brother Jero, to cause the husband Chume to her. And uh, if he does so, he will permit her, he will permit Brother Jero to go with the money. That is the money for the camp. So, unable to get into the camp. So, Brother, Jero, Brother Chume did not know that that was the house of Brother Jero. And then we saw that uh, Brother Chume now asked his wife whether that was the house of the prophet. His wife only replied, Kimi. It was one of the onlookers, people that gathered looking at husband and wife quarreling, that now told Brother Jero that yes, it is the prophet that is living in the house. So we saw that uh, in at five in scene five it was already dark and then somebody was praying and hoping to be appointed as a mem as a minister a member so brother jero tried to talk to him but he told brother jero to get out that he is not one of the kind of people that is so gullible and can be deceived by him then brother jero now gave him a prophecy that he is going to be appointed a minister of war and then that one made the man to submit to brother jero and then he knelt down in the church and Brother Jero began to pray for him. In that process of praying, Brother Chume came so furious and full of anger and wanted to deal with Brother Jero, suspecting that Brother Jero must have slept with his wife because Brother Jero 
one of his greatest weakness is that uh, he always have feelings for daughters of Eve. So Rajero, Rachu may believe that he must have had sexual affair with his wife, since him and his wife are in such a relationship that his wife can give Rajero something on credit. So we saw that the brother Jero now noticing that the brother Chime wanted to deal with him, ran away. The man he was praying for was still closing, his eyes was still closing. And then when he opened his eye, he discovered that the brother Jero is no longer there. And he believed that brother Jero must have disappeared or the God has taken him. So he decided to wait. He slept there. And when brother Jero came, brother Jero now woke him and he threw a pebble at him. And when he woke up, he started praising Brajero that the Brajero disappears and, and reappear. So meanwhile, Brajero was chased out of the altar or out of the church by Brother Chumi because of his sexual uh, desire for almost every woman. So we saw that even Brother Jero and Brother Chumi pray so that uh, Brother Jero will not to be having such feeling for women again. Then at the end of that scene, five. The man still believed that Rajero is a miracle worker. Rajero also was hoping that the man will go out and narrate to the people that he disappears and reappears so that those people will come to his church and then his church will become very few, become very full. So uh, after this, okay, this is the continuation of it. And then after this, we will be considering the things and the thematic analysis in the trial of brother Jero. So if you have not subscribed to the channel, subscribe so that uh, when we discuss this thing, we will still upload it and you will get notified. We have other videos of novels, poems, plays that uh, we will be uploading at time. So subscribe so that uh, you can get notified and click the notification bell. Thank you.